so uh, let's start our new session I think we have everyone uh, we have okay Darshan I forgot to unmute you the hi Darshan uh, hi Chitra. thank you hi okay so we have Darshan Dipti Hari Meena Poonam and Salia okay so we have houseful <laughs> Okay, so today we'll take a new topic, which is a very important topic. And I've been telling you, right, Agile is in itself, it's a different training. But, you know, since we are getting trained as a BA, you should know the Agile concepts, not only the concepts, but but also from the BA point of view. Hello? Yes? Hello? Uh, I can't hear you or anything. Uh, nobody can hear me. When you started, it was clear, but then after, like, I, okay. I think uh, we, I lost your voice. Okay. I'm okay. able to hear you, Chetan. Hmm. Okay. Except I think Darshan. Um, anyone else uh, having issues here listening to me? Chetan, for only that short little while. Okay. Otherwise, it's it's, it's okay. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I was saying is. Today we will take a new topic which is Agile and within the Agile we'll talk specifically the Scrum. Now Agile is a generic term and within the Agile you have different um, you know frameworks like Scrum is one of them. Right? You have Scrum, you have feature driven development, you have extreme programming, uh, you have Crystal. All these are different um, you know frameworks, different methodologies which are based on Agile concepts. Within that, we will take a deep dive into Scrum. That's what where we will focus because most of the jobs are in that uh, area. Okay, um, you guys should be able to see my screen as well. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, user stories for a giant project. Yeah, that that's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here, basically, this is what the manifesto is for um, an agile software development. So manifesto is like a charter of the, you know, like when a new company is formed, there is a charter, right? Basically, it, it's like a, the basic building block of any company is based on the charter. You know the, what a charter is? This project charter? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the concept is same, you know, in the PM world, project management world, we call it a project charter. But even in good old days, you know, when you form a company, or when, a, when a company is oh, formed, sure. there, there is a charter which is being formed in the first place. It's like, um, you know, you can call it as a basic foundation upon which the entire company is built. You know, the main the principles you can say the the fundamental concepts or the building blocks on which <clears throat> that company will be built so similar to that it's similar to that we have the manifesto which is basically telling you what should be the basic premise or basic principles of your stlc model so that's why it's called manifesto for agile software development and there is a bit of history here. The, there was like six, seven, you know, experts in the field of um, IT, software engineering. They basically came together and they, you know, they went on a, some resort in Colorado and they like brainstormed for a week that what what is the best way to deliver a software? Because up until then, people were mainly doing waterfall, you know, how we did step-by-step -step fashion you first do your planning then you do requirements and then delivery uh, design development testing and then you deliver the software so these guys were like you know very brainy guys they thought you know this is not the best way to deliver a software so they basically met in a resort somewhere in Colorado and this I'm talking like uh, early 2000 they met and they said like let's come up with the best way of delivering a software so they brainstormed for a few days and finally they came up with this manifesto. 
So that's how this became very popular. It's also known as Agile Manifesto. If you Google it, you, the, probably the first link is the the link you you can go and read more about it. But the gist of that entire manifesto is captured on this slide. So it says that you know there are four different basic principles which should be considered when you are uh, building any uh, software when you are trying to create a new system or application in the agile environment these four principles are the most important principles you should be uh, basically you know adopting in your stlc so the first one is individuals and interactions over processes and tools so what it says is in the agile don't focus more on processes and very formal way of doing things keep it very simple keep it flexible and make it more collaborative and you know uh, more interactive between people so in the waterfall you know generally we have a very stringent processes like for example uh, darshan you are following pmp right you you will be taking your pmp exam a uh, couple of weeks from now so you know like yes yes in pm as as part of the pimbok it has like i think more, what 40 plus processes right more than that 47 processes. 47 processes and each process has a set of inputs some yes, tool and techniques yeah. And output. yeah tools and techniques and then outputs and if you are following the pimbok you cannot deviate from what it says or what is pres uh, prescribed in that PIMBOK yes, guideline. Yes, that's true. Right? They tell you that, okay, this is what the process is. These should be the inputs. These are the tools and techniques you need to use. And then you have an output from that particular uh, process. So it is very prescriptive and very rigid and very formal. You cannot change anything. You have to stick to that. So they, what these people are saying, as per the manifesto, they are saying that make your processes very flexible and very, um, you know, what you call adaptive to the environment. Don't make them so rigid or so fixed that you cannot change it. And let the interaction and collaboration take precedence over the processes and tools. So that's why in the agile it's more about communication collaboration between people than following a certain process i'm not saying there is no process there is a process but the precedence is you know or the more important piece is the communication between people between the team uh, members the second element is working software over a comprehensive documentation so this is a very important piece here. What this manifesto is saying is, don't try to write big documents. The FRDs and BRDs and use cases and things like that. Just do enough documentation so that team can understand what the requirements are. And based on that, you talk it out. Instead of writing the documents, which nobody is going to see them after they are done, you discuss it amongst the team members and based on the discussion you build the system and the working software is basically your real a proof of concept which the customer will basically see rather than documentation so instead of showing the use case to review them or an FRD to review them you are showing them the real system which has much more value than sharing a documents with them correct so if i were to show you you are my customer if i were to show you like 10 use cases compared to i show you a real application of course it may not be complete it may have only few features but i'm showing you a real application real system which one will you pre prefer to see 
application or a use case yeah, application because that is what you are looking for you are you are not going to sit with the use cases because that's not the end goal the end goal is to deliver a software so on any given day the customer will go for the real system even though it is it has only 10% of features in it they will go for the real system than for full set of documentation right uh, the third point is again you know customer collaboration over contract negotiation so i'll give an example so in the waterfall model you basically lock down your phases do you recollect that yeah yeah right. sequentially phased yeah. you do in a very sequential way so you do your planning yes. you lock it down then you do your requirements you lock it down similarly design development and testing and then you give the system to your end user so what what is the case here is let's suppose you are the customer and i am the pm of that project and uh, let's suppose darshan is a ba so we started working on it and finally you know after like one month of requirements phase darshan wrote all the documents he, you know he did all the use cases and showed it to uh, punam who happens to be the customer now you sign it off you know you you approve the requirements and now based on that approval we baseline the documents and from that point onwards the design will take place and then the development will begin so let's assume that you know after like couple of weeks of signing the the requirements giving the approval there is some new requirement which is really needed by the customer you know punam really needs that set of requirement and she comes to us and say you know we have to add this new requirement because you know it's not there right now and we need it so the pm what i will say is we cannot add this new requirement now because we have locked down this phase you approved the requirements you gave your approval you you know there was a sign off ceremony there you signed the documents now you cannot add any scope to it if you want to add a scope we have to go through a formal process you know which can be done but it cannot be just added based on um, you know just minor discussion it has to go through a process so there will be this is what the contract negotiation is that you know as a pm i will basically negotiate with my customer saying that because you locked down the phase and we approved the requirements you approved the requirements now if you want to add any new requirements you have to go through a process which is called the change control process as compared to in agile it is not like that in agile the idea is to keep your scope very fluid not to lock any phases so if for example the same scenario we take but instead of waterfall we are doing an agile so what i will do as a pm by the way there is no role of a pm in agile but there is another role what we call the you know scrum master so what will happen is the customer when they come back and say you know we add we have to add a new requirement as a scrum master i will basically talk to my customer and see where can we fit that new requirement in which sprint or which iteration we can do it i'm not saying we won't do it we will do some impact analysis and based on that we will say okay we cannot do it in immediate uh, sprint but we can do it in you know next sprint or maybe two sprints down the line so it's more of a collaborative and communication that happens between the customer and the the scrum master and based on that you uh, work uh, with your uh, customers I think somebody had a question No. Is it the Agile project? We don't have a project manager. Yeah, in Agile you don't have a PM. 
in agile okay. agile is a self organized team that means there is no you know boss and subordinate relationship everybody is on, is on the same level and i'll talk more on that when i come there so okay, okay. everybody is basically reporting to each other there is no you know boss and subordinate sort of relationship that's why you know since you are already very close to taking the pmp that's okay but next step would be to go for acp yeah sorry which one the agile certified uh, practitioner agile yeah acp yeah acp it's a very yes, easy yes. exam plus it's you know it's in demand as uh, more than pmp Oh yeah, and the thing is, they don't have any book for that. No, they There's have no a book. separate book. They have a book for the uh, for PIM. Uh, PIM book is uh, sorry, project management is. Uh, uh, they are they are giving the book or no? Even PMI is only giving the book. They have a agile uh, book on that. Oh, they oh they have agile book. I don't yeah. know about that. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the that will be my next book. Okay, good. Can we can we do uh, HL certification before uh, PM certification? Yeah, of course. Okay, so okay, all right. Because since you said next steps, I I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These, yeah, these are both different. See, PMP is based okay. on the waterfall, whereas yeah, okay. uh, Agile, this ACP is based on Agile. Okay. Yeah, because didn't you say that Agile is more um, in like common use now? Yeah, it's more in demand. So okay. I would put my money on Agile uh, than any other certification. Okay. Okay, and the last one is responding to change over a following a plan. So same thing here in the waterfall, you would basically follow a plan, right? In the waterfall, what you would do, the first thing you will do is the PM, right? The project management uh, phase. You will be doing your planning, you will be coming up with your schedule, your estimates, things like that. And once you lock down your schedule and your, you know, all the different tasks you will be doing as part of the project, you will be following it basically. Whereas in the Agile, you are basically not doing all that upfront. As and when you come to that level, you will do some planning and you will do some, um, you know, estimates. You are not trying to do the planning and estimates for the entire project in that phase. You're doing it in piece by piece manner. It's also call, called as um, a rolling wave planning, right? You do some planning for next two iterations and then again you do for next two as you come close to that point. So this is your basically the basic fundamentals of any agile as DLC model clear yes Chaitanya. so now let's go to this scrum uh, framework so I, I, got, uh, I told you you know to go over that series of uh, short videos we have so we'll do the exact same thing here so as I said you know let's start with the roles we have in any any in especially in scrum I'll now from this point onwards I'll only talk on scrum so in scrum there are basically three roles One is your product owner, who is this guy. The second is your sprint team. And the third role is your scrum master, right? These are the three basic roles on any given day in a scrum team. So when you say product owner, who is a product owner? Uh, 
is it uh, equivalent to the customer in the uh, waterfall model? Mm -hmm. Is he is going to control the overall project? It's a product or owner. Say, mm -hmm. Right. So product owner is your customer in nutshell. Right. Yeah. He or she is basically somebody who has the entire understanding of what the problems are, what the issues are, and then what needs to be done from the business point of view. They are not concerned with the system point of view. All they are concerned is from the business point of view, what the issues are, problems they are facing, and what needs to be done. Right, and they can be the voice of the customer as well. So what I mean is, maybe your customer, who happens to be, you know, uh, let's suppose a huge um, retailer, but they may appoint somebody who, on their behalf, will be giving the requirements. So product owner can also be somebody who is working on behalf of your real customers or your end customers but irrespective of that whether this guy is your customer or they are working on behalf of the customer they must know in and out what are the issues are the pre the problems the pain points and what needs to be done in order to meet the goal of the project okay have you heard this term project champion? Yeah, I heard it when I was in Ericsson. Yeah, they have some project champions. Right. I heard that. So project champion, this guy is similar to the project champion. See, project champion is, as the word says, champion, right? So champion means he or she must understand each and everything in and out. They cannot say, you know, I don't know. So somebody who has a very good grip on the problems, on the goals of the project, and they know what needs to be done, they should be playing the role of a product owner. Okay. Is it similar to PM, you know, project manager, uh, No. PM is, the, the Scrum Master is similar to PM. So this okay. guy is your, think about that, you know, as your SMEs. SME okay. is similar to your product owner. Okay. Right. But um, Chetan, when, uh, when I was going through that, uh, that same thing that you had sent, mm -hmm. over there they, they kind of said the Scrum Master has little or no authority, yes. unlike the PM. Correct. Because he is just uh, like a coordinator kind of a person here right. in this particular setup. Yeah. Correct. That's why I said that in, in Agile you don't have a PM role. Right. You just have a Scrum Master who is there to help the team. He or she cannot tell, okay, do this or do that. They cannot supervise or they cannot boss around like the PMs would do. Here, the goal is to make sure that things are moving and there are no uh, impediments and there are no obstructions. If there are any impediments or problems or, you know, obstacles, then the Scrum Master will come in and resolve them. But going back to the product owner, again, the product owner is somebody who who is similar to your SME, right, who understand the issues, the problems, the pain points, and what needs to be done in order to solve them. Now, product owner is typically one person, but it may be possible that you have like a group of people who are playing the role of uh, the product owner. Generally, I've never seen like more than two people who are the, uh, you know, the product owners. Generally, one is best, but sometimes you know one person may not have the entire knowledge so they may assign two people who will be playing the role of a product owner now you might question you know where is the BA here so BA is also part of the sprint uh, or the scrum team but I'll call the sprint team that's 
it's a sprint team because they will be working on a sprint another word for sprint is iterations so it's the same thing sprint or iteration it's the same meaning so the BA fits in this team the sprint team now who can tell me who all are in the sprint team yeah sorry developers and testers mm -hmm. solution architect everybody who were there as the in the implementation team exactly like that okay. exactly yes so you will have your solution architect you will have your developers your business analyst your testers quality assurance and if you have a technical writer they also will be part of it right now focusing on the BA what is the role of a BA here is taking part in the iteration process for each and every iteration means uh, requirement requirement gathering and requirement transformation yeah Okay. Sprint planning person. Sorry? Plan the sprint. Okay. He uh, takes care of uh, planning the sprint. Mm -hmm. or organizing the scrum meeting. Okay, that's also part of it. But the most important part of a, of, um, of for a BA, or the most important role the BA will perform in this kind of uh, environment is to work with the product owner right on a one-to-one -one basis and groom the product backlog I'm sorry so let me now because I introduced one more new term what is a product backlog here you might think you know what this new term is so product backlog is nothing but it's a list of requirements which are dumped in one place and which can be prioritized by the product owner right so think about that it's like a virtual um, or you know if I give you a, a big cardboard box and if I tell you okay you know let me enter all my requirements in I, I write all my requirements and put that in on a piece of paper and I put that all like 50 requirements or 50 you know separate chits in that box so that cardboard box is my backlog the product backlog where I have all my 50 requirements and the product owner will be basically telling me which ones are important and we should do them first and which ones are not that important which we can do it in the next iteration not sprint somebody can mute themselves please Thank you so the product backlog is nothing but a virtual placeholder of all the requirements which are required by the team or sorry which are required by the project or by your product owner right so in this example we have diff eight different you know you know rows each row is depicting one requirement so here we have eight requirements out of that they are listed in the way the product owner wants them to be developed so the most important will be on the top and as we go down you will have less important requirements so again going back to the question or rather the answer the role of a BA business analyst is to work with the product owner and keep grooming the product backlog this is a continuous process it doesn't stop until the project is done so every week maybe Monday you are working with the product owner and you are grooming the product backlog that means you are doing the requirements with them it's just a fancy word you know like how we used to do the requirements workshop right I told you right there is a way you can do the requirements uh, one technique is conduct a requirements workshop so in the agile we don't call it requirements workshop we call it product backlog grooming meetings 
so you will be meeting with your SME or in this case your product owner every week or every you know twice a week to groom the product backlog that means to understand the requirements to you know discuss the requirements elicit the requirements from your product owner clear Yes, Jason. And there is a different way of doing the requirements in Agile. We don't talk about the use cases. We don't talk about FRDs or BRDs. We talk about a user story. Okay. So assuming, you know, I'm a business analyst. I work with the product owner. Maybe after one month of uh, product backlog grooming sessions I had with the product owner. I have like you know list of requirements in my backlog which can be picked by the sprint team to start developing them because the requirements are done in this phase right so the moment we have the requirements you know uh, completed in the sense when I say complete it doesn't mean I'm done with all the requirements my requirements are constantly coming but I may be done with like let's suppose uh, 10 stories I have 10 user stories ready for development maybe the remaining 50 are still not complete so the sprint team what they will do is they will take a look at the first couple of stories and they will do what we call the sprint planning session because now they need to develop it right the solution architect has to design the system the developers have to code it and the testers have to test it so before they can do that and start working in the sprint they will say okay let me take a look at these stories and see how much effort it will take for us to do it so that is being done in the sprint planning meeting before you actually begin your sprint that means you begin your de design development testing work here you will have a different second phase where you will do the sprint planning meeting where the team will pick certain stories and again the role of a BA is to explain what those stories are what are the requirements and based on that the sprint team will do an estimates the team here they will say okay each story will take me X amount of time to do it The reason why they want to do it is because they don't want to take work more than what they can handle so I'll give an example Estim hmm? estimation means uh, what breakdown structure means how many hours they can do or estimation means okay that's what I'll give an example here so let's suppose the sprint can be okay different teams can follow different sprints what is a sprint it's a, it's a group of the people right with the developer tester no that's a sprint team I'm talking I'm ta I'm asking you what is a sprint it's a, uh, uh, it's a iteration right yeah. Uh, yeah but then it is it is uh, measured in 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 the time frame like one process will take these many uh, much time you know to complete one task okay so see sprint is nothing but a time boxed delivery yeah. method yeah. right it's a time boxed so either you can say my sprint is for one week that means I start on Monday and by Friday I'm done with the sprint that means I Monday okay. I begin my development testing and by Friday I should be completed I should be done I can have two weeks sprint I can have three weeks I can have four weeks sprint but I cannot have more than four weeks the maximum you can have four weeks the minimum you can have one week sprint in between that you can pick any what you want Okay, 
So I'll give an example. Let me open this. Maybe that will be easy to understand. So let's suppose we have five days in a week, correct? R right? Five working days in a week. So assuming we have two people on, um, on a team, just hypothetical example, we have two people. Now I show them this backlog. These two people are looking at the backlog and they pick two stories. They will say, okay, let's take a look at the first two because they are most important and let's see how much effort it has so that we can be we can take the work so each one will say okay you know this story will take me uh, let's suppose this guy is saying 60 hours and this guy is telling us 40 hours right so total we have 100 hours correct they pick two stories from the backlog and they are doing an estimate saying okay this is what it will take combined effort it will take 100 hours to do this maybe this guy is new B is new guy A is you know very experienced or rather vice versa sorry A is a is a new guy B is you know um, experienced guy that's why he's taking less hours but total they need 100 hours to do the two those two stories now how much can you get in one day you cannot get more than eight hours right I would basically say six hours in real world you cannot work eight hours right so I got 30 and 30 here so I got 60 hours total see you see what I'm doing here estimating how yes. much time mm -hmm. yeah. right how we yeah, taking an estimate so if If we have two these two people a and b and if we tell them okay pick two stories from the backlog they take the two stories and now they have to do an estimate before they can decide whether they can handle it in one sprint or not correct you don't want to overcome it that means you don't want to say that you know i will be able to do it and later you realize okay we cannot do it you don't want to be in that situation so that's why you need to do a sprint planning meeting so that the team can only take that much of work which can be done in one sprint so in in this example assuming we have a one week sprint that means Monday we start the work and Friday you should be done so in this case there is no way we can do it because maximum we get 60 hours of work whereas we need 100 hours to do this correct so then we will say okay you know we cannot do two let's do only one so maybe this may drop from 60 to 20 and this may come back to 10 Oops. right so now we need 30 hours only whereas we have 60 hours in a week right? this is just an example but in real world you would do a little bit different but I'm just trying to give you the concept how what is the rational behind doing this sprint planning meeting so in this is much better than the previous scenario because previous scenario you would have been in fix because you accepted more work than you could have delivered in this case you are taking less work but at least you know that you will be able to do it. 
right? So the team will basically reach out to the BA and say, okay, take a look at the backlog and pick the stories which are ready to be, they can be initiated. They are ready for development. They will pick those stories and start working on it. Um, basically do the sprint planning and once the sprint planning meeting is done, that's when the real sprint will begin. Right? So whatever is the work you commit as part of the sprint is known as your sprint backlog. So if I, in this case, let's suppose we committed only uh, one story. So one story is my sprint backlog. I may have 50 in my product backlog, but for that sprint, I'm only concerned with one story. In real world, of course, you don't do just one story. You will have at least four or five stories. But this example, I'm just telling you that, you know, the, the scope of that sprint will be only for one story. Clear? So, Chetan, just to reiterate, um, just so that I can, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, so the product owner uh, um, fills up that uh, product backlog with the, the must-haves and the want, wants, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the order of priority and then uh, the BA uh, interacts with him and then he refines that uh, product backlog list so that he can uh, pass on the most important requirements to the uh, his team which is the sprint uh, which is which happens during the sprint planning meeting right mm -hmm. yes and and during that meeting that's when they uh, the, the uh, other members of the team estimate how much effort they're going to put in and uh, what resources, additional resources they might need. And then based on that, they uh, they pick and choose the best ones that they can deliver in the sprint backlog or the, or the task breakout session. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. One thing here is the sprint team cannot basically just pick the stories from the backlog. It has to be done based on the priorities set by the product owner. That's very important. The, my sprint team cannot say, okay, you know, these are the easy ones. Let me do six, seven, eight. No, because the product owner, <clears throat> they basically put the priorities in this way. Top one, two, three are most important. And as you go down the list, it becomes less important. So the sprint team has to make sure that they pick the stories which add an, a value to your or gives a value to your product owner. If let's suppose in this case, if I say, okay, the sprint team decides and they pick six, seven, eight, and they start working on it, the product owner is not going to be happy because it was never a part of their priorities. It was always at the bottom of the list. The most important were one, two, three, and then four, five, six, and then seven, eight. So the sprint team will only pick the work which is set by the product owner where the priorities are set by the product owner. Now, if they think that they cannot do it, let's suppose the first uh, three uh, stories, the sprint team thinks that, you know, it's way beyond our capacity. We cannot do it in one week. So then the team can negotiate with the product owner and say, you know, we cannot do these three stories in one iteration. So let's break it down. We will do the first two and then we'll do the next one in the next iteration. That will be acceptable for both the parties because here the sprint team will be able to commit and they will be able to deliver in one week those two stories. At the same time, the product owner will be getting all three stories, but in two iterations. So both the parties are, you know, happy in that case. Is that clear? So from this point onwards, once the team commits the work and it, get, it gets added to the sprint backlog, from that point onwards, you cannot change the scope of that sprint. 
what you committed must be delivered that's why this session is very important if you miss this or if you don't estimate it well you are going to have issues in your sprint either it will be you know you you have over uh, you know uh, committed that means you have accepted more work than you can handle or you have accepted less work than you can handle both are not good you should basically optimize your sprint team capacity and deliver exactly what you can you know handle neither too much nor too less right so once the stories are added to the backlog the sprint will basically kick off that means every day the team comes in they do the design they do development they do the testing and every day they start working on it they build on the every day's work they do so in this example we are taking one week sprint so monday the team starts they work tuesday wednesday thursday and friday so by friday evening the sprint is completed that means monday what you started is done by friday evening so if you pick two stories by friday evening the system should support those two stories if you show the system to your product owner they should be at least they should be able to see those two you know stories supported by the system so let's suppose the top two stories were the first one was um, you know create an account and login so by friday evening your product owner should be able to go and create an account and they should be able to log in of course they cannot do anything beyond that but at least these two stories are complete and the system is supporting them right Are you guys clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So different teams will have different uh, sprints or sprint cycle. As I said, you know you can have minimum one week or max four weeks. You can pick any range in between. but generally it has to be like you know either one week two weeks three weeks or four weeks in my project we have three week cycle or sprint and in certain different projects i have seen like four weeks i have also worked on a sprint which has which was like four week long there is basically no right or wrong you know answer here you can pick based on what your team needs so the role of a ba again when the sprint is initiated is to support the sprint team a very important question for an interview what is the role of a ba in the sprint right generally typically saying the the sprint is where you are writing the code and testing it that's all you do there is no real requirement session be, being done as part of the sprint all the requirements are being done here in the product backlog so one may think you know the role of a ba is negligible or rather there is no role of a ba when you have a sprint going on but that's exactly opposite to what people think you know role of a ba is more of a supportive role because the team may have a lot of questions surrounding the requirements so ba has to give a supporting you know um, or rather a support here they have to give a support in terms of requirement support field any questions that sprint team has if they find any gaps which is always possible they have to go and fill those gaps let's suppose somebody missed the scenarios the ba missed capturing the scenario in that case somebody from the development team pointed out hey we don't have that scenario so the ba will be reaching out to the product owner and discuss that scenario with them and reach out fill the gap and again 
you know uh, go back and explain it to the sprint team this is what the gap is and that's what we will do so the role of a BA is not just here to groom the product backlog but also in the sprint planning meeting to help the team understand the requirements and here to help the team this develop and uh, complete the requirements test the requirements sometimes as a BA I'm also told to test the requirements so I also do the testing here okay So uh, uh, the BA doesn't actually go back uh, and work with the product owner while uh, the team is working on the first three priorities. No, BA is actually working with the product owner on a continuous basis to groom the product backlog. But that doesn't mean you know you will be a hundred percent working on it. You know, maybe once a week you are working with your product owner, groom the backlog, and the remaining four days you are, you know, helping your sprint team um, in doing the sprint. And again, you know, the requirements, what you do in your product backlog, they may be very raw. You know, you don't have the, in the complete, you've not done the analysis part. You have just done some requirements um, gathering. So th the next step would be, you know, you still have to, do some analysis you still have to document them in a different set of you know uh, in a different format so you still have to do a lot of work besides just working with the product owner so is that clear Hari? Uh, yes, Chetan. So now what happens every day the sprint is being conducted, the sprint is in flight. So here what will happen is we have a ceremonies. In Agile we use all the fancy words. One ceremony is your sprint planning meeting. In fact from here itself. Your product backlog grooming is one ceremony. That means one event, you can think of it. The second event is your sprint planning meeting where the team will be picking the work from the backlog and understand the complexity of it and how much it will take to do those uh, user stories. The third ceremony is your daily stand-up meeting or it's also known as daily scrum meetings. So what will happen is every day the team will basically you know come in a, you know and meet for like 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes generally in a hallway or coffee room or somewhere you know it's not a very formal meeting it's a very informal meeting so but the idea is to bring the entire team in one place and tell them three things what they did yesterday right what they will be doing it today and what are the issues or the impediments they are facing and everybody is reporting to the team it's not a PM and the subordinate kind of thing so even if I'm a lead BA in my team I'll be reporting it to the entire team what I did yesterday what I will be doing today and what are the issues we are facing same thing even if the senior most solution architect is part of the team he or she will be doing the exactly same thing. So there is no boss and subordinate relationship here. You're not reporting it to one person. You're reporting it to the entire team. And since everybody is doing it to the entire team, there is no boss and subordinate relationship here. Okay. So the daily scrum meeting is 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes you answer three things what you did yesterday what you will be do, doing today that means what you are planning to do today and any impediments or issues you are facing
and generally they are done in the morning because people are fresh like 9 30 10 9 30 or 10 ish so that you know we can be done with the meeting and people can focus on their work that's what your daily stand-up meeting is so now let's talk about the scrum master now scrum master is a role played by somebody from the team itself generally you don't have a specific scrum master because the role of a scrum master is based as I said you know it's more of a facilitator and he or she must ensure that the team is working without any issues or they have all the tools and techniques they need to conduct their work right if there is any issue or is uh, or conflicts whether it's a people conflict or whether it's a technical issue the scrum master will be responsible to solve them but they won't be active unless and until these things happen right and scrum master is not the person who will be responsible for the success or the failure of the project it is the entire team who will be sharing that responsibility unlike the you know waterfall model where the pm would be basically nailed down if the project gets into a you know issues or it it's a failure the project will me the project manager will be kicked out right he or she will be losing the job that's the first person who loses the job in this case because the scrum master is not the whole and soul of the team and neither he or she is the pm of the team the entire responsibility of the project success or you know uh, growth is on the entire team not just one person so for some reason if the project goes into any you know rough phase or if the project is a failure it's not only the scrum master who takes the share or take the brunt of it it's the entire team if it's a project is successful still the entire team will take the you know onus on themselves or responsibility The credit goes to the entire team not just the PM generally in the waterfall if the project is a big success the PM will be recognized right even though the team did a great job you know the PM will be the first person who will be recognized in the team but in agile you don't want to differentiate between the PM and the subordinates everybody is one team And generally, practically, I've seen like Scrum Master is being played by either the lead BA, um, like in my project, I do the Scrum Master role, or it can also be Solution Architect or a Senior Developer. Anybody can play the Scrum Master. So is that clear? now we'll take a look at the burn burn up and burn down charts uh, tomorrow but for today I'll just give a over overview of what exactly they are see burn down chart is a way to see where you are on the project how much work is still remaining that's pretty much what you get from the burn down or burn up charts it's the same burn down is basically showing you how many hours are burned that means how many hours are left rather and the burn up charts is showing you how many hours you have exhausted so this is your burn down chart it's coming down whereas this is your burn up chart and I'll we'll give we'll do some examples so don't worry about it but this is the way you track your projects health how much work is remaining how much work is done that's exactly what you do or infer from your burn down or burn up charts
ok any questions I'm good Shetan thank you Miss most of the company are focusing on the uh, agile right now right that's true yeah it's not that the PM role is not there. It's just that you know the the, the agile is more popular these days, and still you know I've seen like even PM get hired for agile projects. So it's not that they don't get. Yes. Yeah, it's like according to this this uh, session, like uh, means uh, agile is more far better than. Uh, other project management means yeah see the biggest advantage is the biggest advantage here is you are getting the review or the product or the system yes. you are building you are getting the feedback immediately from your customer customer yes right at the end of ECU here okay let me come here see the sprint review is another ceremony which is very important so what will happen in this ceremony when you are done with your sprint? Let's suppose you have a two week sprint now instead of one week. So at the end of that second week, you will show your system to your product owner and tell them to review. Hey, can you please check the system and tell me, give me the feedback. So instead of showing them the documentation and the use cases, FRD, BRD, you are showing them the real system now. Yes, yes, yes. And that exact feedback you are getting it in real time and that is so valuable because your customer is seeing or product owner is seeing the system and they're telling you, okay, this is good, this is not good, please fix this and make the changes. So you're getting the feedback immediately at the end of second week. Yes. yes. If the same thing was being done using a waterfall, you would have got the feedback maybe in the eighth or ninth month. Once everything is de designed, developed, and tested, that's when you will give it to the customer to test it. And it may be too late for you to make those changes because everything is completed. Here you are just doing it in bits and pieces, you know, in a small chunks. That's why it's much easier to make those changes. Okay. okay. And, and one thing, like who is responsible the, for the cost? Means cost is also there, right? Yeah, cost because is... Yeah, that's a good. There will be a continuous, continuous iteration, and the requirement is is going to be a change each and every uh, meeting. Then the cost is going to be higher day by day, right? That's or, true. See here, what we do is we do some basic guesstimate. There is no basic like you know hard numbers here. We just tell them, okay, in order to do do this uh, this project, we will need you know 20 iterations or 20 sprints hello yes yeah Chetan, we can hear you. okay so let's suppose in the beginning of the project you know the team will sit down and say okay we will need in order to do this project we will need like let's suppose 24 sprints okay now each sprint is three weeks Oh, sorry. What what are I saying? Twenty four sprints, right? As I said, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So twenty four. Uh, your question was about the estimate, right, Darshan? Cost estimate means Cost uh, estimate. how can we? Okay, I got. Okay, okay. So <clears throat> let's suppose in the beginning of the project, I say that you know one one sprint will be three weeks okay yeah. and I'm saying that okay it will take me roughly I would say uh, six sprints to do this project right so one week we need three weeks 
So 18 weeks we will need to complete this project. Correct? Yeah. Yes, yes, you are right. Now what will happen is the team there of course as I said you know there is some team the governance team will be there who will be doing this so they will be sitting down with some uh, some you know rough estimates saying okay how much it will cost to do this project in 18 weeks how many people do we need how much of you know what are the tools we will need for this project so everything will be cost uh, will be added to the cost of the project based on that estimate it's not a hard number it's just an <clears throat> estimate there so anything beyond this will of course impact the scope not the scope but the cost of the project as you said and in agile you know of yes. course you know the cost is important but you don't limit yourself or you don't lock down any of these things okay if it takes plus minus twenty thousand dollars to do this you know you can talk to your customer and get an approval and do it if they say no then don't do it right it all depends on what your customer needs if your customer tells you okay i need this feature at any cost you can say okay in order to do this you know we will have to do two more sprints and that will cost us x amount of hours i mean dollars so would you like us to do it if they say yes then do it otherwise don't do it okay okay and okay. the product owner product owner is going to be a take care of the cost section or what no product owner is not responsible for the cost he or she is okay. only responsible for the requirements then the cost will be handled by by somebody else you know there will be different stakeholders okay. The project sponsors will be there. Okay, 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 okay. Got it. Right. Ethan? Yeah. Ethan, uh, this uh, is DMC, uh, is specifically the team basically is uh, a short, a small team, like from four to nine, maybe an average of seven people in a team. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, can, can this model handle really huge projects? Or, yes. or if there is, yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, I got, I got your question. What you're saying. So, if what if the team, I mean, if the project is so huge, can you do with seven people? Exactly. Can you do it with seven people? No. So my uh, following question was: So, is there like a team one, team two, uh, uh, yeah. you know, working on uh, simultaneously, you know, different projects? But then that would mean those many number of project product owners. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. the coordination. So is that how the system works? Yes, that's uh, exactly what you said. So what will happen is, it's it's a, there is a term which we call the Scrum of Scrums. Okay. That means you have multiple Scrums or uh, Scrum me, uh, teams working on the project. So for example, here. So I may have, let's suppose, a big project. Let's suppose we are working on a big project. So I may have sprint. Team B. So I have, I have four different teams. The sprint team working on the same project, but we have four different sprint teams. Each one will have its own, um, what do you call, um, uh, product owner can be same, they can be same or they can be different. Scrum master. Okay. Right? Scrum master, yeah. BA, solution architect, developer, tester. So each one will have its own set of people. Right. So that's called Scrum of Scrums. Right? You have multiple Scrum teams. That's why it's known as Scrum of Scrum. Okay, but now suppose if we are removing the main process of a change, mm -hmm. because here it's iteration based. So every time there is a thing needed, it is 
uh, implemented and added and you know again the process uh, uh, is followed. Over here there is nothing like a, a conflict situation than if there are four teams doing uh, work on different components and when, when there uh, is one particular product mm -hmm. which, which is not uh, coming out to expectations. So then... Uh, Integration. Sorry? Yeah. To, to the requirement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how is the change, like there is no change control board here, right? Like there is no uh, integrated change control here. So how do the team, I mean, how do they work then? Like what is the process of a change over here? Okay. So I'm, what I'm, will... I'm saying not between the team members, but intra-team, inter-team. Yeah. So what will happen is these teams will not be working in silos, first of all. Right, sprint team A, B, C, D, they all will be working together even though they are small teams but they are part of one family. Think about that. So they may be working on different components of the system but at the end of the day they are one team. So they ha there has to be a collaboration. The first fundamental right here, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So that's exactly what I meant, you know, these teams will be talking to each other on a day-to-day -day basis and make sure that there are no conflicts or no, uh, you know, duplicate work or nothing which basically will impact the quality of the product. So they will be talking every day, maybe, you know, what we do, we have two teams, we don't have four teams right now, but we have two teams, right? Mm -hmm. Each team has its own BA, has its own... Uh, you know, solution architect, your developers and testers. So what they do is they coordinate every day amongst themselves to make sure that there is no gap or they are not stepping into each other's shoes and there are no conflicts. It's not a huge meeting, you know, 15 minute meeting. They will talk it out and see, you know, if there are any conflicts, they'll resolve it. Or it can also happen that one team needs support from the other team. So in that case, the team will say, okay, you know, let's do it. If you need some something to be done from our end, we will do it and then let you know. So it's more of a collaboration. Okay. So you got the meaning of the sprint review, what it means? Yeah. So... If I ask um, Saliya, what is a sprint review meeting? Okay, so uh, sprint review meeting is um, when they review what they got done during that um, sprint time. Mm -hmm. uh, all different sprint meetings, uh, different um, group um, teams get together and they update each other on uh, what they got done and how it went. Okay, you answered it partly right. The sprint review is meet. I mean, sprint review meeting is mainly for for the product owner. So what will happen at the end of the sprint? You show the real system to your product owner and ask the feedback. Okay, is this exactly what you want? If yes, okay. it's good. If not, then what exactly are the changes? Please tell us, and we'll fix it. So basically, the product owner is part of all the meetings in it, uh, in this. Um... Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So, as I said, you know, let's suppose the first two features or the first two stories we picked were creating a profile. Customer is able to create the profile and they are able to log in using their ID and password. So, maybe at the end of the sprint, you will only show these two features because you only developed these two stories. So, the sprint review meeting, you will see, you will invite the customer or the product owner and say that, okay, you know, you can go ahead and use the system. So the product owner may start creating a profile and then they may also log in using their ID and password. But that's all they can do because that's all we did. Correct? And it is also known as a very important term, MPV. Um, What is MPV? MPV. Mm -hmm. 
it's known as it's basically what it means is the basic features you can deliver to your customer minimum viable product uh, sorry MVP it should be minimum viable product that means this is the minimum with the minimum features but they are working it's not a fully functional system it doesn't have all the features but whatever features we have they are fully functional MVP. So, Chetan, you said features. Minimum vi viable features or product? M product. V product. P. Okay. Okay. MVP. Okay. So the definition or the meaning of a MVP is that we are giving you two features but they are working. They are 100% working. Hello? Okay. So, so uh, Chetan, if the uh, sprint time is like a two week. Mm -hmm. So this sprint review will happen only at the end of the second week. Exactly. That so? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, and if there will be a changes then uh, how much uh, there will be a one more time time period like one week or two weeks they have to do another sprint review meeting? No, every sprint will have its own review meeting but let's suppose in this case you did one week sprint at the end of the one first or let's suppose two weeks right at the end of the second week your okay. product owner uh, starts playing with the system and tells them you know like uh, the login and ID I need some changes right now we are except we don't show them the reset password link yes they tell them, you know we need that as well so you will say okay let's take the requirements and put them in the backlog right and whenever we get to the point we'll do it Okay, okay, okay. It will go to the back, product backlog. Right? Yeah, any new requirement okay. will go to the backlog by default. Okay, means all the requirements, means product backlog is our requirement. Uh, uh, repository. Yeah. Repository, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. And the last ceremony is your sprint retrospective. So, similar to what Darshan, you might have learned about this lessons learned. Right in the PIMBOK. Yes, lesson learned. Each and means it's the output. While closing the project, we have lesson learned. What is it? Can you explain? Lesson learned means like if I am successfully completed the project, then I what whatever uh, estimation I have done, what are the resources I have taken, uh, like some resources need uh, have a training, mm -hmm. and all the kind of stuff is should be there in the lesson learned. Means if the project is not successful, then what are the reason for not get not having successful project? Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, what are the uh, what are the problem we are getting during the executing of the process while requirements are not clear or a uh, couple of uh, means uh, requirement are missing and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so as as you said, you know whether the project is a success or a failure, mm -hmm. yes. you need to do the lessons learned at the end of the project. When you before you close the project, you have to conduct the lessons learned meeting. Yes, yes, right? yes. Where you invite all the team members and discuss what went well so that you can repeat it. What did not go well so that you don't repeat it again. Right? And learn the best practices and you can share it with the other teams. Yes. Exactly the same concept is here. Only difference is the sprint, uh, the sprint retrospective is done at the end of each sprint. So you don't wait until the end of the project. At the end of each sprint, you will do this meeting. Here we don't call it lessons learned. We call it sprint retrospective. But the concept is same, exactly same. What went well in the sprint so that you can repeat it in the next sprints? 
what did not go so well in the that sprint so that you want to avoid those things you don't do it again in future and you capture the best practices and share it with the team <clears throat> that's what you do so if you have two week sprint at the end of every second week you will do these two meetings your sprint review meeting and your sprint retrospective meetings clear yes any questions okay meena are you good i'm good chetan thank you okay so now you should be at least very clear with the scrum framework what is a scrum what are the different roles you have what are the different ceremonies you have what is the role of a ba in that are you guys clear with that yes i am chetan yes yes chetan okay and it won't harm you if even if you go again and again you know do the those videos the animated videos you know every two days just do it. it you want to reinforce those concepts in you to the maximum possible extent okay so <clears throat> what i will do is tomorrow we have to uh, okay we will cover the user stories how to write them and then we will use a tool called jira and we'll see how we can use a tool to do our work in agile jira is a very simple tool and i will send you a small uh, you know it's a user guide where you can how to create your uh, pro project using um, you know your id and password so not today don't do it today because they just give you like 6 days to play with the tool so maybe we can do it tomorrow night once we are done with this session you know tomorrow night you can create your profile or maybe um, wednesday morning so that you get full 5 days to play with it okay tomorrow what we are going to do tomorrow we'll learn how to write the user stories and uh, how to write an acceptance criteria for the you know user stories because in agile you don't write use cases you don't write frds and brds you start with a simple requirements which is called a user stories very simple way of writing the requirements I have a question. What's the difference between um, Agile and Scrum? Are they the same thing? No, Agile is like you know. I can say let let me give an example. You know, I, I say car, right? Now car can be Honda, can be Toyota, can be BMW, Mercedes. So that's what Agile is like a car, and all these different are like Scrum and FDDs, Crystal, Extreme. So Agile is a very generic term. You see what I'm meaning? What I what I meant? So agile is just stands for the style of um, any for yeah. transportation, for instance. Yeah, any framework or any SDLC which basically promotes this kind of you know iterative and okay. incremental approach is okay. your agile. Okay. Right. It's a generic term of saying you know. So scrum. All Scrum because it has a Scrum Master. Is that? Yeah, Scrum is basically its own framework. Similarly, if you talk about the Crystal, has its own set of doing things, the it, its own way of doing things. Um, extreme programming has its own way of doing things. You know, feature-driven driv development has its own way of doing things. 
right? So there are different uh, agile models. Uh, Scrum is one of them. Oh, okay. So we, but we will be only learning Scrum. Yeah, because that's what people are using these days. Okay. Okay. Right. And uh, unfortunately, in many of these, uh, you know, like XP, extreme programming is also known as XP, X as an alphabet X and P. So there is no role of any other person. There is no PM, there is no tester, there is no BA, nothing, only the developer. So they will basically write the code, they will test the code and they will show it to the customer. It's like doing an ad hoc development, right? You don't care about any of the processes, any of the requirements or you know testing. You just code it, show it to your customer and fix it and again show it. That's how you do your uh, project. But you know these are not being used. Only the Scrum is the one which is you know widely popular these days, and we'll focus. That's why we'll focus only on that. Okay, but to answer your question, Agile is a generic term, whereas... Yeah, I got it. When you gave the example of um, like just developer, one, it, made, it made sense because I think that's what me and one of my friends is doing because she's making a website mm -hmm. for a school we're working on and uh, so we are like fixing it as we go. It's just not me and her. I, I, I'm just her, the tester person for her. Okay, nice. <laughs> so yeah, so... Um, so yeah, so basically we are just like fixing things as we go, pretty mm -hmm. much. Yeah. We see errors, mm -hmm. but we're working together. That's oh, not like right. plan. Maybe. It's also known as a, like a pair programming in XP. That is a term called pair programming. So what they do is, you know, there are two developers who are working together, and you know, one person will be coding and the other person will be testing, you know, those kind of things. So. We can go over the other is uh, agile models, but you know that's not going to add any value. Yeah, that's I, why do. I, I mean, it, Scrum is the only thing we use. I mean, yeah. I don't want to overload myself with information that I, yeah. I'm not even aware. Exactly. Yeah. So we don't want to. Yeah, no, Scrum's fine. I I just wasn't sure because it mm -hmm. said Scrum training videos, and uh, we were so I was just confused. Mm -hmm. but I okay. Okay. Everybody clear? with the Scrum uh, framework and the different uh, ceremonies we had, we talked about what the role of a BA is in uh, grooming the product backlog in the sprint planning meetings. Yes, Jason. Clear? I would recommend you, you know, again, after two days, go over the video because they are very easy and very, you know, informative. So it won't harm you if you do that. It will only add some value to it. So do it as and when you get time. Okay, so this week, we may, most likely this week, we should be done with the training. So next week, we'll focus on the interviews. And I'm leaving on 14th. And I'll be back on 10th. Okay. Okay. And Chetan, one thing before we are going to finish. Mm -hmm. uh, what is this Scrum, Scrum Alliance? Scrum Alliance is like an institute which is basically, um, you know, all into advancing uh, or promoting the Scrum uh, framework. And they issue the certifications like, you know, there are different types of certification they issue. One of yeah, the most yeah. easy and most popular is uh, the Scrum Master. It's easy. Very, yeah, it's a damn easy certification. You know, you cannot fail it. So they issue that certification, Scrum Master, and uh, a lot of other certifications are there, like, you know, product owner and estimation. Yeah, there are a lot of, you know. So <clears throat> you can do it once you, you know, get some experience. Yes, yes, that's true, but I'm just taking an overview. Means like yeah. It is a certified body like a PMI or it's yes. a... It's same like PMI or IIBA, all of these. 
Okay, okay, because they have lots of courses this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of the most popular. It's like a, it's like a PMI in uh, Agile, you can say. Yes, it's yes, that's true because. Yeah, because a couple of my friends who is, uh, who is in Ericsson, mm -hmm. they are doing this from alliances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's why I just asked you because one of, one guy already certified for the uh, uh, Scrum Master. Scrum Master, it's it's a joke certification, you can say. Okay, you, okay. Not that's why I'm saying is you cannot fail it basically. Okay, means he he doesn't do anything big then. <laughs> I mean, it's always good to have certification, but. The point is, you know, it's not that difficult certification. You can easily get it. Okay. Okay. If okay. you know this yes. basic concepts, you know, you can okay. crack the exam. Okay, okay, okay. But it will add, add, add a value to a resume or a job? It won't harm you, basically. That's what I can say. It won't <laughs> add any real value to it, but it won't basically <laughs> harm you. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay. Okay. Certification is a big uh, industry, right? In in US and yeah, all. Yes. So yes, yes. They yes. will create one certification for even uh, how to talk. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Possible. Yeah. So that's kind of you know you have to pick the right certifications. Otherwise. Yeah. Project. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Okay, as one thing, like for uh, Ajay, uh, if you have time, just send me the book name if you have. Yeah, sure. I will do that. I don't have the soft copy. I can send you the name of the book. I have a physical yeah, copy. I just, yeah. Yes, I just need the name of the books. Okay. And I can send you some uh, soft copies of, uh, you know, um, like an Agile extension from Bibok. Like, you know, okay. I'm, because I'm a certified BA from IIBA, so they keep sending okay. me all the new versions and all that. So I okay. have a, you know, Agile extension, which is similar to what we are doing here. So you can okay. use that as well. Okay, no problem. That's fine because like uh, after PMP like that, that uh, I'm pr I'm planning for the agile next year or later on. Okay, good, excellent. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay then. Uh, any questions before okay. we drop off? Chitan, uh, uh, I'd like to touch base with you tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Yeah. Do me a thing. You know. Do me a favor. Call me exactly at noon. Okay. Okay, I called you at 8.30, I think, but then it was too late, I guess, for you. Yeah, I was just getting my dinner done and then uh, preparing, for, uh, getting ready for the class. Okay, no, never mind. We can talk tomorrow. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'll give you a call tomorrow noon. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, somebody else um, had a question? Nope. Okay. Okay then, I'll see you again tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Yeah. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night. 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 Good night.